Hey there, I am Dr. Richard Day, and this is the Cairo Business Mojo Podcast. I recently sat down with Dr. Angela Kennedy, and I had the pleasure of talking to her about a couple of different subjects. We focused primarily on the American Chiropractic Association's recent efforts to try to get the three codes that chiropractors are currently reimbursed for expanded beyond that, things like exams and x-rays, things that other physicians, non-chiropractors are reimbursed for. We also talked about some of the training and the things that that chiropractors need to know to be able to follow the Medicare rules, which of course all the other chiropractic or all the other insurance companies look to for their chiropractic guidance and reimbursement and things like that. So pretty important subject. Now she's very qualified to talk about these things. She is the former senior VP for education and health policy at the ACA. She's very educated. She's got a master's degree in business administration with a concentration on operations management from Loyola University in Chicago. She has a bachelor's in biological sciences with a concentration on genetics from the University of California, Irvine, and a doctor of chiropractic degree from Palmer College West. So this was a great little discussion we had, and there's a lot of great information as well. She's also going to share with you a quick tip about a new program being offered, a new platform to help you guys understand how to navigate these rules, to really get clear on what it is we need to do to follow the Medicare guidelines. Hey, you bet. We're excited to have you here. We got a bunch of questions, but before we get to those, I wanted to ask you, for those who don't know, just tell us a little bit about the American Chiropractic Association. Right. So I think, you know, we all think that the ACA has been around forever and ever, um, but it was officially founded in the early 60s. Um, And prior to that, I mean, I think since the early 1900s, there were various chiropractic associations milling about. Um, So 1963 marked the end product of this multi-year effort of unifying the profession and these various associations that were out there. Um, And to this day, ACA is one of the largest and most influential professional chiropractic associations in the U.S. It represents more than 10,000 DCs, chiropractic students, and other chiropractic professionals. Um, And it continues with that commitment uh, to being a positive and unifying force in the practice of chiropractic. Well, the reason for having you on today is we wanted to talk a little bit about Medicare and what the ACA has been doing in terms of Medicare coverage. Before we get into that, how long has Medicare covered chiropractic care? So actually in 1972, as part of the Social Security Act, Congress that Congress passed, chiropractic was made available in the Medicare program. Um, I mean, I know there's a lot of, of you know, misinformation that's going around that Medicare doesn't cover chiropractic, but for almost as long as I've been alive, uh, Medicare has covered uh, chiropractic. So Medicare beneficiaries, or we call patients, Medicare calls them beneficiaries, um, the only coverage has been for the chiropr- one chiropractic service, which is spinal manipulation. So we've got the cervical code, the thoracic code, and the and the low back code. So we've got the or one, two, and three re- regions. Um, so what happens is oftentimes when that coverage runs out, either patients have to pay out of pocket for services from the chiropractic chiropractor, or they have to go to another provider that Medicare covers um, and transition their care over to PT, etc. cetera. Um, and it kind of creates a complicated financial logistical burden for a lot of Medicare beneficiaries. Yeah. I mean, I, I treat Medicare patients myself and, um, you know, we oftentimes have, have people on fixed budgets and you're telling them that they have to, you know, coming to see a chiropractor, they're not going to have their exams covered and their x-rays, but their x-rays would be covered if they went and got them taken someplace else. So it's a lot for someone with, um, and sometimes transportation and other things uh, can be a factor as well, but it's a lot to put on that Medicare recipient. That burden is, it can be heavy. Right. Yeah. I mean, I'm glad you brought up transportation. Transportation, because yeah, not only is it financial on fixed budget, but you know, logistics of finding a new place to go, driving places. So it'd be nice if it can all be contained within you know one provider. Sure. Well, how many people are currently covered by Medicare? 
So currently it's around 55 million. Uh, but, you know, we've got this great uh, baby boomer population that every day people are turning 65. Uh, so that number of Medicare beneficiaries is anticipated to increase by about one third over the next decade. So you know, this is one of the reasons Medicare is so important is because that population and those who are being covered by Medicare is growing and growing. Yeah, I'm seeing this as well. And, and you know, the doctors of chiropractic that are out there, um, certainly they're going to start seeing those numbers increase as well. And that is certainly reason to pay attention to what's going on with the Medicare population and understanding uh, what it is to how to treat Medicare and document that. But what what else? Is there anything else we need to know? Well, you know, I mean, I think one of the focuses on Medicare within ACA, which probably has been since 1972 when the Social Security Act came out, uh, is expanding that coverage. Um, so like it was a great win that we did get into, uh, you know, the Medicare purview of having some sort of coverage. Um, but despite you know, 10 decades of um, lobbying efforts, it has not really been expanded. Um, and as we know a lot about the baby boomers, they're very active uh, a group of, of people. So they want to remain active. So what better way to do it than through sure. chiropractic? Um, so that one part is definitely expanding the uh, coverage of chiropractic for this growing population. Um, but the other part is that Medicare is kind of the driver for the many other private health insurance plans, which then, you know, expands it out to all of the population. So while the Affordable Care Act was great um, and made some changes in insurance coverage. I think probably one of the bigger regulations that's recently come out is the Medicare and CHIP Reauthorization Act, which I'm sure we've all heard the term MACRA, uh, that came out about five years ago. So that is now shifting of, of a payment reform of Medicare. And of course, insurance companies are following. So where we've got coverage on one hand, on the other hand is how we're getting reimbursed for what it is that we do. So what MACRA did, um, people may have heard of MIPS or QPP or another bit of the alphabet soup. Um, mm -hmm. So MIPS is the merit-based merit incentive payment system, which is a shift from pay for quantity. So how many, how many patients can you get through? Uh, you know, how many times can you bill a specific service, also known mm -hmm. as fee for service, uh, to a bit of a pay for quality or value-based care. So that is, you know, how, how well you're seeing results from the care that you're, you are delivering. Are patients getting better? Um, so the only way that pay, that Medicare and private payers can see without being in your practice, <laughs> the value or the quality of care that you're delivering is through documentation. So yet again, documentation is still very important. Yeah, it definitely can be understated. And I think this move to EHR and then now the additional, uh, you know, PQRST and, or PQRS, I think is what it was, and then MACRA and MIPS, all of that is moving towards a trend of, data mining and analysis of what we do um, and then reimbursement based on that. So if Medicare is going that way and the other insurance providers are going to go that way as well, we have to get this right. Right. Exactly. Well, speaking of the coverage that care of chiropractic through Medicare, what is the ACA doing to help expand chiropractic services within Medicare? Well, you know, it is a never ending process, uh, but we did have a pretty big win in November of last year. So there was legislation that the ACA has been working on for several years to expand Medicare coverage services by chiropractors within the scope of their licenses. Um, and it did make it through the House of Representatives. So what this bill does is the intent of it is for Medicare beneficiaries or those patients is to have access to the chiropractic services that are within the scope of practice. Um, so expanding it from beyond that manual manipulation uh, to include things like extremities, joint mobilization, mm -hmm. soft tissue massage techniques, 
uh, physiological therapies and exercise. Um, so this is all part of the movement, you know, of the opioid crisis that we've had and what are alternatives to drugs. So, you know, of course, chiropractic is a great non-drug approach. Um, so this is now within the Medicare wave of coming up with expanding their uh, coverage to non-drug non -drug approaches to pain management. What a great idea. You know, I, I 10 years ago when I started practice, I, I hand drew out a pyramid and I put at the top um, conservative care and then I put drugs and surgery down below and sort of progression. There were some other layers in there, but it was sort of the opposite of the way the model has always been. And this wasn't amazingly original thinking. A lot of chiro doctors of chiropractic who that I knew and, um, and other practitioners had this model in mind. And then uh, it's unfortunate that it took an opioid e epidemic for people to stop and figure things out. But that's often, unfortunately, you know, people put a stop sign or a stop light at a place where there's been a lot of accidents. And so um, we tend to be sort of lagging when it comes to doing those things. It has to be forced. But I'm glad Sorry for the reasons, but I'm glad we're at that point because I think what a better way to look at things. Right. Yes. Yes. And, you know, we've had several years to allow for various types of research in it and, you know, to have some strong evidence to take forward to Medicare to, you know, demonstrate the value. Okay, so you mentioned that um, documentation is really the key to this. You need to understand how Medicare wants you to do things. And then beyond that, you need to provide great service, be a great doctor, and you have to document what you did appropriately. And I think that's where a lot of people get hung up because there's a lot of misinformation or conflicting information. If you go to the Medicare site, it's hard to find things specific to chiropractors, and sometimes it's written in legalese. Uh, so <laughs> what resources are available to ACA members to help them comply with Medicare standards? Well, one great resource uh, is a uh, online Medicare course that the ACA launched about, oh, I'm gonna say it was about six months ago now. Um, it is called Medicare Training for the Chiropractic Office. So in July of last year, ACA launched an online learning platform called Learn ACA, and this is one of the many courses available within there. Um, but the purpose of this course is, of course, to provide doctors of the chiropractic um, opportunities for training on proper documentation for Medicare, um, but it is also geared towards the office staff. So it could be used for a great onboarding training um, or refresher for the office staff of the requirements. Um, and of course, it's available 24 seven, which is what is great with online learning. If you're looking for CEs, it's got one CE available. Um, but the great thing about this course is that it's not just a recording of a webinar or just a voiceover and, you know, you're listening to it. It's a true e-learning module uh, where it's somewhat interactive. You know, you've got words and faces, so you're not just reading PowerPoint slides. Um, mm -hmm. And then at certain points, it's broken up where we brought in some of our ACA members who are actively practicing we hired some actors to be patients and we ran through scenarios so that we can take, as you mentioned, the legal ease and what are these words on this page from a regulation? What does it look like when you're implementing it in your practice? Um, so there are a lot of scenarios that are run through and then there are some downloadable resources that are written in, in plain language uh, to help distill down and, you know, what it is, what is it that I actually have to do where I don't have to read through these pages and pages of regulation. Um, so that and a bunch of other courses are available at the direct link is learn.acatoday.org or you can go to the ACA website and click on the learn button and it will take you right there. Well, this sounds like a great platform. And I think I heard you say that there are other things offered uh, as well as Medicare training. So what are some of those other things available on this platform? So we have the topics broken down into buckets, um, which actually if you click on uh, the left-hand panel, it will drop down all the different topics that we have. So we've got business management, evidence-based practice, coding, documentation, quality and safety, 
diversity, nutrition, rehab, wow. and you know, every month more and more are getting added. Um, we also have a a new doctor toolkit. Uh, so there are special programs such as that focusing on new practitioners, um, you know, or specifically those who are working with Medicare patients. There are a lot of options or courses available for those as well. Well, that sounds like a great resource. I mean, having something that's been well put together, researched, organized, all in one location sounds like an incredible value. Yeah, we're very excited about it. It's a, it's a great platform. Well, you know, talking about Medicare, what are some of the common misconceptions about Medicare as it, in regards to chiropractic care? Great question. Uh, so there are a lot that have been circulating around for years and years. Um, I think one of the biggest one is that chiropractic isn't included in Medicare. But, you know, as we previously discussed, uh, it's been in the program since 1972. Uh, so also, as we mentioned that, which was great that we were in there, it does define chiropractors in the same bucket as all physicians, um, which then Medicare is expecting physicians who treat Medicare patients to have the knowledge and keep current on the rules and regulations that, as we mentioned, are changing about every day um, of Medicare and to keep up on them. So, we totally get at the ACA that your focus is on patients and it would be very time consuming um, to keep up on the changing regulations. So not only is there the training that we mentioned about, but also on the ACA Today website, there is a tab with all of the resources um, of Medicare. And you know, every once in a while when a big thing comes out, there's kind of a rolling announcement about what's happening in Medicare to keep that kind of collated for everyone. Um, I think the other big misconception is that chiropractors can opt out of Medicare. So this is pretty tricky um, because there are different terms that sound like the same thing. Uh, so one is the opting out. So as a chiropractor, you cannot opt out of Medicare. So you do need to get an NPI number and register with Medicare. Uh, so opting out is not the same as being not participating or non-par as it's called. So you do have to opt in, you have to get an NPI number, but you can be non-par or you can be non-participating. So if you decide to be non-par, um, that still doesn't mean that you don't have to bill Medicare. Uh, for all Medicare Part B services, they have to be billed to Medicare by the provider, or you will get penalties uh, such as fines. Um, get your name. There is actually technically a, a, a blacklist uh, that your name can be put on with Medicare. Uh, so this is known as having to submit is the mandatory claim submission rule. So on the ACA website, there's a lot more information about what the mandatory claim submission rule is, how to enroll in Medicare, uh, how to get an NPI number. Also in this training, it walks through and has the links provided of, of where you can get information from. Uh, and you know how to properly be non-par as to opting out. So there are many more areas of the Medicare program and documentation that are explained in this video. And as I mentioned, there are links um, to additional information, talks about, you know, what is covered, do you have to take x-rays, even talks about, you know, having the word subluxation in there, what you need to document for every visit. So it's a pretty comprehensive training video um, that does walk through a lot of the misconceptions and then also cl clearing up those misconceptions than what it is that you need to do and your options of what you can do. Well, thanks so much. This has been some great information that I think is going to help a lot of our doctors of chiropractic. But before we close, how can ACA members help beyond, well, if you're not a member, beyond <laughs> becoming a member? Um, and then how can you get involved? What opportunities are there to become more involved in the organization and with the future of chiropractic? Oh, well, thanks for asking. Uh, so yes, members can do a lot just by staying informed. Um, and, you know, you can, even if you're not a member, there is non-member information publicly available on the ACA uh, Today 
website. So anybody uh, can stay informed by going to the website. Uh, but there are also a couple other options um, that are available. Uh, one thing that has really picked up and I think is very interesting just to keep track of is this, uh, I guess it's a conversation place. It's called My ACA. Uh, kind of looks a little bit like a Facebook stream uh, where people can throw out a question and anybody who, you know, has a login to My ACA can join into the conversation. So let's say you've got a question about Medicare um, or a question about a patient, you know, HIPAA compliant, you could pose that to this large network of ACA members and it's very active and you can get information from, you know, every viewpoint. So it's pretty interesting, even if you're not just asking a question, just to watch the conversation and see what people are asking and, and you know, what people are talking about out there in the world. Um, so, of course, you can also, if you're a member, you can serve on our advisory boards and committees. Um, each year, you know, they're renewed and new people are placed on committees, etc. So, you can look for that on the website. There's usually a pretty big announcement when it's time to submit applications. Uh, we also have a blog. So, they are written, the blogs are written by members. So, ACA solicits members to write blogs on, on various topics, um, whether it's Medicare or VA or research. So, there are blogs that are archived on the website, but you can also subscribe to have them emailed to you. Um, and members and non-members, as I mentioned, you can uh, join, go to the website. Um, we've got our annual meeting that happens every year in early February, which is NCLC, uh, the National Chiropractic Leadership, uh, what does the last E stand for? Conference. Um, so there are a lot of ways to be involved. Um, and of course, we've got the traditional social media of Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. So We've got a lot of ways to, to keep engaged in the chiropractic profession. No excuses. There are so many ways to get this information and to connect. Uh, we just need to take the time to do it. That's probably the biggest thing we all, the biggest challenge we all face. Well, Dr. Angela Kennedy, thanks so much for taking the time today to, to share what's going on with the ACA, what's going on with these educational resources that can help us navigate the world of Medicare better. Yes, it was great talking to you. Great questions and great conversation. Thank you.